Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. 630. WMAL. It is 837 on the morning majority. Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, Mary Catherine Hamm, and we are pleased to be joined by a man with one of the biggest brains in politics, a man who knows more about the American political system than any human being on the planet, Michael Barone, who now writes for the Washington Examiner. Michael, good to have you with us here on the Morning Majority. How are you? Hey, Brian. Thanks very much. You're awfully kind. Well, I wouldn't say it were it not true. Look, uh, we're, we're getting ready to do this straw poll in Iowa. And a, a lot of people, you hear this a lot. Well, the straw poll, it doesn't really mean it. Much ado about nothing. Is it important or is it just sort of a weird little political thing that we all pay too much attention to every year? Every year, well, Four years. I think it tends to be important. I mean, you can make the argument that it shouldn't be important. Um, you know, you've had fifteen to 25,000 people in a state of 3 million and a country of 300 million. Uh, it's a small number, but uh, participating in this. But um, it winnows uh, the Republican field. It tends to do so. You've, uh, you know, you have uh, uh, candidates like Lamar Alexander and Dan Quayle in 1999 just gone after the um, Iowa straw poll. Sam Brownback, senator from Kansas, was running as, you know, Christian conservative, human rights, foreign policy. He was gone after the straw poll in 2007. And Mike Huckabee, who was only 3% ahead of him, uh, went on to win the Iowa caucuses and to be one of the major competitors of John McCain. So, yeah, it does make a difference, uh, whether it should or not. All right. And who do you think is going to do best there? Uh, well, I think that, uh, you know, they, they, in a sense we've already discounted this, but I think Michelle Bachman, uh, who, you know, four months ago uh, was not considered a serious candidate for president by just about anybody in the politics business. Uh, I was just out at her headquarters uh, yesterday evening, and uh, it's popping up that two months ago. She didn't have a headquarters running, uh, but she's uh, clearly doing well here in Iowa. Exactly how well we'll see, uh, but she's made herself a serious candidate in the run up to this uh, straw poll. Now Iowa was where Tim Pawlenty was going to, by conventional wisdom, going to have to do well, and demographically had potential to do well as a Midwesterner and perhaps appealing to some evangelical voters. Yep. Anything you can peg to? for the reason he hasn't caught fire in any way? Might he surprise people at the straw poll? Well, he might surprise people in the straw poll. His campaign seems to be uh, uh, pretty, you might almost say, desperately trying to concentrate on people who are in companies not too far from Ames. And fact, late late and night in Iowa there, Mike, right? right? That, and in fact, that may, yeah, late night. And that may make a difference <laughs> because he's... Uh, um, you know, if you look at the the, the 2007 um, or 2008 straw poll, um, not straw poll, but the uh, Iowa caucuses, you you find that it's one third of the people are from uh, the eight counties, including and surrounding Des Moines. Uh, so there is a concentration there. But uh, yeah, Tim Pawlenty's trying, but he could easily be the one that's eliminated here, unless he does better than just about anybody has been thinking he's doing over the last uh, several weeks. Uh, I think his candidacy, um, you know, is could, fail. You could call it a sleepy candidacy at this point, or something like that. So, what? How, how do you uh, how do you see Rick Perry getting in the race, and how it affects Michelle Bachman and Mitt Romney? Well, I think it, you know what what appears to be happening is that uh, Rick Perry is. Uh, is getting ready to make a speech in South Carolina on Saturday, the day of the Iowa straw poll, saying that he's uh, he's running for president, and uh, then he's going to be in Sunday. He's going to be in Waterloo, Iowa, at a Republican uh, meeting in Black Hawk County. It's Michelle Bachman's hometown, so he, in effect, is kind of one upping the straw poll and. Uh, He's doing something that Fred Thompson failed to do last time, which is that, Fred, remember, Fred was talking about getting into the race in March 2007, but he didn't get in, and his people said, well, he can't get in now because 
he would then be in the Iowa straw poll, and he wouldn't do well because he doesn't have enough time to organize. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to do anything till after the straw poll. And by the time he actually declared himself a candidate in September, the Ilf had gone out of his candidacy. Uh, Perry clearly is trying to avoid that pitfall. Uh, and uh, by announcing the same day as Iowa, and hey, if he doesn't win in Iowa or it wasn't on the ballot or doesn't get any right in votes, who cares? Uh, he's out there and, and in the state the next day. So clearly that's an attempt to uh, to bump in and become a major candidate. And I think uh, the polling and other things tell us that he is uh, likely to be a major candidate. I think it was a, a fairly prominent Republican blogger in Iowa who claimed that this this announcement on Saturday was going to upstage the the Ames straw poll and that Iowa Republicans would not forget it and they would blame Perry in some way. Do you think there's any validity to that? Well, there may be some validity to that, but one thing I will notice that is in the last uh, several times that the Republican nomination has been up for grabs, and I'm thinking 1988, 1996, uh, 2000, 2008, the state that has really um, made the difference, that has been most significant, uh, that has been the real decider has not been Iowa, has not been New Hampshire, it's been South Carolina, right. uh, which votes early since. And, uh, you know, uh, Perry's. Uh, so if, if I was going to diss uh, one of the early states, <laughs> I might choose to diss Iowa, uh, <laughs> South Carolina. Hey, Michael, very quickly, and we just have a minute or so yeah. left here, I want you to sort of uh, give us your snap assessment of what happened in Wisconsin last night. Uh, well, um, the the I ha- I haven't gotten all the results on Wisconsin yet, but what 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 was the result, Brian? Well, the re- I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> Michael. Obviously, just waking up in Iowa. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry to do that to you. Uh, basically, the the re- Republicans were able to maintain their majority. The Democrats gained two of the five seats. Yeah, that's the returns that I saw, and uh, basically, it seems like um, you know Scott Walker, the Republicans in I in, in Wisconsin have had. Again, another narrow escape. They got it on the Supreme Court election that they had uh, last spring. And um, the idea that this was going to totally revive the Democratic Party uh, and make it then a fighting force doesn't seem to be the case. It seems to me we're still more in 2010 than we are in 2008 in terms of a political year. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Michael. As always, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Michael Barone, Washington Examiner, here with the Morning Machine.